So you want to buy a new recorder, and you've been enticed by the cosmetic makeover of Zoom's product line. After careful deliberation, you've managed to narrow down your options to the Zoom H6 All Black and the Zoom H4M Pro Black, but you can't seem to decide between the two. On the one hand, the Zoom H4M Pro model offers a budget-friendly and extremely mobile recorder, while on the other hand, the Zoom H6 offers a greater range of use cases and adaptability. In this video, I'll provide you with a detailed comparison of both of Zoom's recorders mentioned above, as well as which one you should purchase, based on how you intend to utilize a device. First, I'd like to quickly cover the differences between the new black versions and the older ones. In the case of the Zoom H4M Pro, I couldn't find any difference, except for the black finish. When it comes to the H6, you actually get less than what you got with the older, grey version. With the new one, you no longer get the MS capsule, nor do you get the plastic carry case that comes with the older model. I assume Zoom did some market research and found that most people didn't care about those. Now, as mentioned at the start of the video, the Zoom H4M Pro is usually the less expensive option, whether you're buying new or used. The Zoom H6, however, is also a very affordable option and will only set you back slightly more than the alternative. Now that we've briefly discussed affordability, it's time to delve deeper into the features of the recorders in order to explain both the differences and similarities between the two devices. One of the differences between these two recorders is the number of XLR slash TRS inputs each device has. XLR inputs are often used in conjunction with larger microphones, such as shotgun and podcast mics like the Shure SM7B. XLR inputs also offer the use of phantom power if your condenser microphone requires it. In any case, the Zoom H4M Pro contains a total of two XLR slash TRS inputs, while the Zoom H6 has a greater capacity for utilizing external microphones for the use of its four inputs. In fact, not only does the Zoom H6 provide you with more inbuilt XLR slash TRS inputs, but it also offers an option to increase this number to a comprehensive 6 XLR slash TRS inputs when used in cooperation with the EXH6 combo input capsule. As a quick side note, the H6 cannot provide phantom power to the EXH6, so if you're planning on connecting 6 condensers to it, the Zoom H8 might be a better choice. Of course, the influence that the number of inputs has on your decision to purchase either the H4M Pro or the H6 alternative will likely depend on how you intend to use a device in the first place. For example, if you're planning on conducting face-to-face -face interviews, then the two XLR slash DRS inputs on the H4M Pro should suffice. In fact, you don't even need to plug in two external microphones. Obviously, that will produce a more professional sounding interview, but I've seen plenty of interviews conducted with a Zoom H4M Pro placed in between the speakers. Again, this will not produce professional results as it will introduce quite a bit of noise, both due to the distance of the speakers from the mic and as a result of ambient noise. However, if you're planning on recording a podcast with numerous guests or location audio for your short film, you are lucky to find that the two XLR slash TRS inputs are simply inadequate for your needs and you require the four or even six inputs provided by the H6. Both recorders also provide a 3.5mm input for lavalier mics. On the H4M Pro, this can be found at the back of the device towards the top. In the case of the H6, this is actually built into the XY capsule. Bear in mind that not all of the capsules have 3.5mm inputs, as I found out when I checked my SGH6 capsule. When it comes to portability, zoom recorders have always been light and handy, while retaining their rugged sturdiness, and the H4M Pro and H6 models are no exception. Both devices weigh in at approximately 280 grams, whilst the H6 with the included XYMI capsule weighs around 410 grams. Regardless of which device you choose, they afford the user a great deal of mobility when recording on the move and when traveling. The H4M Pro is also slightly more compact when compared to its H6 counterpart, in addition, the H4M Pro comes with a hard plastic case, which will protect it from accidental bumps and scuff marks. 
Unfortunately, this is not the case for the H6 or black. The older, grey H6 came with a hard plastic carrying case, but the new version doesn't come with it, nor does it come with the MS capsule that the older version had. We'll get into capsules a bit later on in the article though. Despite this inconsistency between the two, each option feels well built and solid in the hand, giving you the feeling that both were designed with durability in mind. In terms of battery performance, both the H4M Pro and the H6 run on AA batteries, but in terms of battery performance, the H6 has a significant advantage over the H4M Pro model, which seems to drain the batteries much quicker. With reference to recording time, Zoom states an approximate battery life of 20 hours for the H6, which in my experience is a fair estimate. Meanwhile, Zoom suggests that the H4M Pro provides users with 6 hours of battery life, However, when collecting the community's experiences, as well as reflecting on my own experience while using the H4M Pro, it seems as Zoom may have made an overestimation when quoting the 6 hours of battery life. So, be sure to pack plenty of spare batteries if you plan on recording for any amount of time with the device. Alternatively, you could run either device off the mains. You can purchase accessory packs for each recorder, namely the Zoom APH6, and the Zoom APH4N Pro. Both will provide the means to plug the recorders in and run them off constant power so you don't have to worry about battery life. One of the most important aspects to consider when purchasing a handheld recorder is the audio quality. Both the H4N Pro and the H6 can produce fantastic results under the right circumstances. For example, the voiceover for this video, as well as a few of my more recent videos, has been recorded on the Zoom H6 with the SGH6 shotgun mic attachment. The reason is because, as a digital nomad, I travel around and so I usually can't control the environment very much. The SGH6 is relatively small, but also directional, so I can mostly capture the sound of my voice whilst largely ignoring sounds coming from the back of it or from the sides. As long as you're recording things that are relatively loud, such as sound effects, musical instruments, or your voice, you're going to get clean recordings. However, as every recording device has a level of self-noise, when recording things that are particularly quiet, such as natural ambiences, you might find that the recording has a bit more hiss than you'd like. The only device that I can really recommend for quiet sounds in the handheld category would be the Sony PCMD100 which has been discontinued as far as I know, and which is currently selling on the used market for quite a bit. Alternatively, you can have a look at the Sony D50, which is the model before the D100. Some say that it doesn't sound quite as good as the D100, but look up some recordings online and decide for yourself. Given that the D100 is so sought after, you might be able to get a more decent price on the D50. By the way, if you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like, as it will help with the algorithm, and other people will be able to find this video as well. And now, back to the video. When it comes to sample rates and bit depth, both devices allow you to record at up to 96kHz by 24-bit. When it comes to bit depth, just go ahead and stick with 24-bit. In regards to file type, I just go with WAV as it allows you to capture more data compared to, say, MP3. A file format like MP3 is specifically designed for portability and ease of transfer, so some of the quality is stripped away intentionally in order to obtain a smaller file size. When it comes to sample rate, you have three options. 44.1 kHz, 48 kHz, and 96 kHz. 44.1 kHz is usually used for recording music, Whilst there's nothing stopping you from recording your music at any sample rate, that's usually what's used most commonly. 48kHz This is typically used for recording dialogue in film or audio that will go over any kind of moving picture. For example, the audio for this video is recorded at 48kHz by 24-bit. Finally, you have 96kHz. This allows you far more flexibility in post-production so it's not really necessary for most applications. 96 kHz is only really necessary if you're intending to record sound effects, ambiences, or sounds which will be heavily manipulated. 
One key difference between the two presented options is the fact that the H6 has an integrated minus 12 dB backup option. When recording using this feature, the device captures an alternative, quieter recording. This way, if your recording peaks too high and gets distorted, you can grab clips from the backup recording and replace the unusable sections of the main recording. Unfortunately though, the h 4 m Pro does not have this option. Also, if you intend to utilize your zoom recorder outdoors, it will be necessary to pick up some kind of windshield in order to mitigate the effects of wind on your microphone. My personal recommendation for this purpose is this Rycode kit which offers a 3-in-1 solution. A windshield which protects the microphone from wind, a shock mount which helps eliminate handling noise, and a grip by which you can hold it. I have links down below for everything, including Ryko kits designed for both the H4M Pro and the H6. Another aspect in which the Zoom H6 model is superior to its H4M Pro counterpart is its versatility for the use of modular attachments. Much like lenses on a DSLR camera, these capsules can be easily swapped so that the capability of the device can be maximized in different situations. As standard, the HX model includes with it an XY capsule which utilizes two separate unidirectional microphones which are able to record audio across a wide area whilst maintaining the strongest audio in the center of the stereo image. Furthermore, there are a plethora of separately sold modular attachments compatible with the Zoom H6, which are not compatible with its H4M Pro counterpart. I've already mentioned in this video the EXH6 combo input capsule, as well as the included XYH6 capsule. However, the modular capacity of the Zoom H6 All Black does not stop there. Indeed, the mention of these two capsules hardly scratches the surface. The MSH6 capsule is another modular add-on compatible with the Zoom H6 and was included upon purchase of the previous original Zoom H6 grey recorder. This capsule enables you to manipulate the width of the stereo image after the recording has already taken place. The SGH6 shotgun microphone capsule allows you to record high quality sound using an affordable, compact and highly directional shotgun microphone attachment providing an alternative to the traditional expensive and large shotgun microphones. As mentioned before, the voiceover for this video is recorded using the Zoom H6 and this mic. The XYH5 shock mount capsule is similar to the previously mentioned XYH6 capsule, except that this capsule, which is included with the Zoom H5, has inbuilt shock mounts. The role of this shock mount is to reduce the unwanted noise caused by vibrations directly impacting the device itself. The SSH6 mid-side stereo shotgun capsule essentially combines the elements of the two aforementioned modular capsules, the MSH6 capsule and the SGH6 shotgun microphone capsule. With this modular attachment, you are able to utilize an incredibly directional shotgun microphone while also recording background sounds using a bi-directional side microphone. This background audio can be manipulated in post-production in order to include as much or as little environmental noise as you wish alongside a dialogue recorded with the shotgun mic. When it comes to the displays, there are a few minor differences. The H4M Pro model possesses an inbuilt backlit LCD screen spanning 1.9 inches. While this screen is legible in low light, there can be a few visibility issues if utilizing it on sunny days. The H6 model, on the other hand, boasts a 2-inch tilted full-color LCD display with adjustable brightness, a feature that is lacking in the H4M Pro alternative. The screen tilt is useful if you want to mount a device on a DSLR for example, but it can make it difficult to see your levels if you're using it like I am to record voiceovers. Since I'm using a mic capsule, the screen is facing away from me at an angle, thus making it impossible to see what's happening. When it comes to storage, the Zoom H6 allows for the utilization of 128GB SD cards in order to store your audio files whereas the Zoom H4M Pro only has the capacity to use 32GB SD cards. 
I don't know how much of an advantage this is really, as even when recording at 96 kHz, you'll still be able to get hours and hours of audio before filling up that 32 GB card. So, in conclusion, which one should you buy? Overall, both the Zoom H4M Pro and the Zoom H6 are relatively affordable and offer some similar features. The main aspect to consider is the number of external microphones you are likely to require and if you will have any need for capsules. If you need more than two inputs, the H6 is a better choice for you due to its four built-in XLR inputs. Alternatively, if you think that two external microphone inputs are sufficient and you don't need the capsules, then I would go ahead and save yourself some money by choosing the H4M Pro instead. If you're still not sure, I just go for the H6. It's not that much more expensive and you're future-proofing yourself in case you do need to expand and purchase more microphones. Additionally, Zoom handheld devices, if kept in good condition, have historically preserved their value rather well. So, if you find that the H6 has too many features that you don't need, you can always sell it, potentially recoup a good chunk of your money, and then purchase a Zoom H4M Pro. Do you have any questions? Don't forget to leave them down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to have a look at any of the products mentioned in this video, and you would like to know how much they cost in your country, you can find affiliate links down below. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.